Oh, that would be great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Corinne Turtis, and I'll be the commentator. Today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our readings remind us that however discouraged or angry we may feel about a situation, God never fails to watch over us and offer us the nourishment we need. Father Celestine is the celebrant for this Mass. Let us now rise.
We begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Today, Jesus is inviting us to trust in him. Jesus is inviting us to hold on to him, even when things are not going the way we want. Most times we are tempted to only love God and love Jesus when the going is good. But Jesus today wants us to know that even when the going is not good, we should hold on to him because he would always make a way for us where there seems to be no way. And so for the many times we have failed to love God in our difficult moments, let us call to mind those times, be truly sorry, and ask God for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. 
the Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hands in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and his strength, and the wonders that he wrought. The Lord give them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. Food he sent them in abundance and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare the test in the Lord. I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. (coughs) In the fertility of their minds, that it's not how you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into a boat, into boats, and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the Father, God has set his seal. So they say to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. So they say to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they say to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, today is the 18th Sunday in the ordinary time. This Sunday, of course, beginning from this evening, we rejoice because of the great nourishment that God gives us daily through Christ. And Christ is the bread of life. Through Christ, we as Christians have undergone what Paul refers to as the spiritual revolution, which is contrary to the physical revolution of the Israelites in the desert against Moses and God. So for us today as Christians, our satisfaction is no longer dependent only on material things, but mostly on spiritual things and food. And these are what God, through Jesus, gives us. The Word of God in the Bible and the bread of life at the Eucharist. So that is what is most important for us today as Christians. Of course, what we read in the first reading today is a confirmation of the saying that goes to say that a hungry man is an angry man. If a person is hungry, he becomes unnecessarily angry. If a person is hungry, he doesn't reason well again. If a person is hungry, he can do terrible things as a result of hunger. So due to hunger for physical food, the Israelites revolted against Moses and they despised God in the first reason of today. They quickly, because of hunger, forgot the great things that God has done for them. They forgot how God separated the Red Sea 
they forgot how God defeated the Egyptians in order to save them. Due to hunger, they put God to the test. They adapted his ability to provide for them. Of course, God is not man. God was not angry with them. So irrespective of all that they did, God provided for them today by feeding them with manna from heaven. So God is always faithful. God does not change. God does not deal with us because of how we do. God's blessings is not dependent on what you do or what I do. God's blessings is abundant and is for everybody. So you need to tap into that God's blessings by good life. So sometimes God may understand when we become frustrated. Sometimes God may acknowledge when we face challenges. And that is why today, even when the Israelites grumbled, they murmured, they revolted, they despised God, yet God provided for them because their major problem was physical hunger. In the gospel passage of today, Jesus read the minds of the people. You remember last Sunday, we are told that Jesus fed the people with two fish and five loaves of bread. And that gave the people the feeling that Jesus was a magician. They were looking for bread. They were looking for Jesus today for bread. Not necessarily because they believe Jesus is the Messiah. In fact, if you listen to the gospel, they had some arguments with Jesus. If you are the Messiah, do a sign. What can you do to prove? They wanted a proof. They wanted an evidence, something that is evidential, that they can see, they can feel, before they would believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So the followers of Jesus today, they were carried away by material things. And that is why they were looking for Jesus. So rather than first accepting Jesus as the word of God and the Messiah, they were concerned about their physical hunger. When Jesus told them, I will give you the bread that does not finish. They still were expecting physical bread. But Jesus was not talking about physical bread. He was referring to the bread of life, his body and blood. And that is why he said today, I am the bread of life. Anybody who eats the bread of life shall never die. Even if he or she dies, he shall be raised on the last day. That is the power, the efficacy of the Holy Eucharist we have. One of the greatest reasons why the Catholic Church is different from other Protestant denominations is the fact that they do not have the Eucharist. Of course, Of course, they have some celebrations that are similar to the Eucharistic celebration, but they do not have the efficacy, the presence of Christ like we have. So Jesus today has told us without missing words that I am the bread of life. One important lesson we need to learn from our first reading and gospel passage today is that when we pay too much attention to material things, we may fail to pay attention to spiritual things. The people who follow Jesus today, they were concerned about the fact that he gave them bread last week. So they came again for more bread. The Israelites, they forgot that God rescued them from slavery. They were ready to become go back to slavery simply because they were hungry. 
as Christians today, our focus should be more on spiritual things, should not be on material things. Of course, God is concerned both for our spiritual and material needs. So let us ask God today for the grace to trust him even when things are not going the way we want. Let us ask God today for the grace to hold on to him, the bread of life, so that at the final time, he may go to us eternal rest in heaven. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, let us bring our prayers and petitions to God our Father, trusting that he would receive them. For the universal church, that we heed the counsel of St. Paul and set aside eternal division and rivalries and strive for unity in the spirit through the love of Jesus Christ for the glory of God the Father. We pray to the Lord. For political leaders that they discover ways to benefit their people that do not damage our ecosystem or oppress the people of other countries. We pray to the Lord. For those who this summer are traveling, reuniting with distant relatives, or seeking well-earned rest, may they keep safe and experience a deep renewal of energy and spirit. We pray to the Lord. For those of us still at risk from COVID-19 and its variants, especially young people and children, that God grant us protection to the effort of science and our own common sense, we pray to the Lord. For Odette Echeverry, John and Lorraine Carroll, Christine Arturo, Mary Ellen Fayette, Connie Richardson, and those who continue to suffer from illness, depression, and chronic pain, that God may give them peace, hope, and strength. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died this week, we remember especially Julie O'Leary, 
Paul Edward McLoin, and those women who died in childbirth and the babies who lost their lives in the womb. May our Lord welcome them and comfort those who mourn for them. We pray to the Lord. This Mass is being offered for the souls of John and Mabel Atman. We pray to the Lord. For the prayers and intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God our Father, we bring our prayers to you. We believe that you will receive them through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end the acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gate to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they do for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that particularly of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command are formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with everybody.
my sisters and my brothers, look, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements.
This week's second collection is for the School Earthquake Retrofit Fund. Thank you for your support. We acknowledge those parishioners and friends who have contributed to this year's Archdiocese Annual Appeal to meet St. Anne's goal of raising 53983 As of July 26, we have received 27340 Thank you. For sure, are at the entrances of the church. There will be a blood drive in Moriarty Hall on Friday, August 13, from 10 a.m. to 3, 3 p.m. See the bulletin for how you may register. Mark your calendars for a St. Anne Parish picnic to be held in Golden Gate Park on Sunday, August 22nd, from 10.30 to 2.30 p.m. Helpers are wanted. See the bulletin or our webpage for more details. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Have a great weekend, everybody. strong.